We'll talk about the word problems a little more in class. Uh, really got to work on those. But um, let's look at these. Okay. Domain and range. The domain is the numbers going left to right. So how far does this go left? Since it has an arrow pointing left, this goes all the way to infinity. And it has an arrow pointing right, it goes, oh, I'm sorry, negative infinity, and goes up to infinity on the x-axis, right? The way we talked about it was squashing this down to the x-axis. This would go down and have an arrow this way. Let's go down and have an arrow that way. So this is negative infinity to positive infinity. I would also write the other way, all real numbers. Just because they may ask you different, they may ask it a different way in your, on your test. Okay, now the range. If I squash this down to the y-axis, it's starting here at zero. So we'll start at zero. There's actually a point at zero. So we get the box. And then the arrow would be pointing up here to positive infinity. Okay, how do we write this in terms of, in, in the other way? We say that y is greater than or equal to zero. Right, that's what this means. Okay, what is an axis of symmetry? Symmetry is something that cuts it in half and looks exactly the same on both sides. So if I was going to cut this in half, I cannot cut it this way because it's not the same on both sides. I have to cut it up and down right here on the axis. So the axis of symmetry is the y-axis. What's another way you could say y-axis? The equation x equals 0, right? Okay. Um, the vertex, where's the vertex? It's at the origin. Another way to write that is the point zero zero. Right? That's what we're looking for when it moves. When we say it moved to the right, moved up, moved down, we look at the at the vertex. Okay. Now on the bottom, they're not asking you to solve it, they're asking how many solutions there are. There's multiple ways you can get these answers, but Here's the deal. If I have absolute value of x equals a number or the absolute value of x is greater than a number, um, absolute value of x is less than a number, if all of these are positive numbers, these have two equations, right? That's when we split it. And so we could get two answers for all of these, right? Now, if they tell me absolute value of x equals a negative number, that's no solution. Also, if they say the absolute value of x is less than a negative number, that's no solution. We can never be smaller than a negative number. And then finally, the absolute value of x is greater than a negative number. That's all real numbers, or what we call infinite solutions. Had to think about how to spell that. Okay, so I'm looking for one of these three. Now, naturally, they're going to give us... Uh, they're gonna give us some that would make it difficult on us, right? They're gonna find a way to trick us. So, right here, when I see this equals this, yes, I have a one-third here, so I'm not even supposed to think about answers until I get rid of this one-third. So if I multiply by three, multiply by three, that cancels, and I got absolute value of x equals 36. This is just a regular problem. I could split it, I'll get two answers. So how many solutions? Two solutions. Okay. On this one, if I, I got to get rid of this negative two first. If I divide by negative two, divide by negative two, notice that cancels, I get absolute value of x minus two and negative three. That tells me I'm going to have one of these special cases because I got a negative three here. What they're also checking is, do you know your rules? 
the sign should change when I got a, when I divide by a negative number. So when the sign changes and I say when is this greater than a negative number, always. All real or infinite solutions. Infinity solutions. This one, when I divide the negative 3, divide the negative 3, right, all that cancels and we get x minus 2. This sign needs to change and we get negative 1 on this side, right? So when is this less than a negative number? What well, can't be? This is going to make it a positive answer no matter what. So the really the smallest number we could get is 0 and that's still bigger than negative 1. So that tells me right now that this is no solution all right work on the word problems